On Saturday, we decided to get out and go and make another attempt to see the SpaceX launch of the human's return to human spaceflight. As we were heading out, we had to go by the supercharger that was nearest to us on the way uh, to get a charge because I hadn't charged since we went out earlier in the week. And because I had all these free supercharger miles left that were going to expire, I figured why not just go ahead and do it now as we're heading out. So this was my first stop along the way was just to get a charge. Well, it's another day and uh, they've set up for another launch. So my son and I decided we're going to take another trip and give it a shot. So we're charging up at a supercharger and I've got my shirt on. It's the uh, Four Forces of Flight. Kind of works well for the uh, idea of traveling up to the uh, see a space flight today. So hopefully they'll actually take off. I think we're going to actually maybe go a little further south this time. Not going to make it all the way to Melbourne. Maybe hedge a little bit because the weather is not looking so good but we'd still get a good view from there. It's maybe more like 60 or 70 miles from the launch site where we'd get to maybe, instead of going all the way up to Melbourne, just stop somewhere closer to Jupiter. Still get a good view, but um, maybe just hedge a little bit in case the weather's bad. So we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Now, as far as actually supercharging, I have not charged my car since we went out the other day. I just left it in the garage and I'm using the supercharger this, uh, this morning to actually get uh, myself uh, fueled up. Now, as you may know, when you look at the uh, superchargers, uh, th that one is listed as 4A, and the one that I'm plugged into is listed as 4B. When you select one that's a part of a set, if you get one of the two and the other one is empty, then you're going to get a faster charging time because there's more energy being deployed because it's distributing it to the two chargers at the same time. So always want to pick one that's an A or a B if you can. Uh, if the other one is open, you, uh, you get a, a faster charging time. So just something to keep in mind if you're driving your Tesla. So come along, we're going to take off and we're going to head up to uh, toward the Space Center and uh, see what happens. And anytime you can get to a number like that at over 100 kilowatts per hour, how close to 150, you are doing okay. And so we set out on our way. We weren't sure exactly how far we were going to go, where we were going to make it to Melbourne again, where we could try and go further, where we are going to try and go shorter. With a 50-50% of chance of uh, launch, we decided that we would maybe go as far as Vero Beach. And so we stopped at the uh, Port St. Lucie supercharger again along the way. So far we've made it as far as uh, Port St. Lucie. We um, stopped at the uh, supercharger that was there in Plantation, uh, and then continued on our way and just uh, drove up the ways. We're in Port St. Lucie doing a little charging here just to have a little more energy so we can kind of drive around for a while. Our plan is, uh, we were talking about it on the way, our plan is to kind of go and go as far as maybe Vero Beach this time. It's a little bit closer, gets us uh, within range where we'll still be within maybe 100 miles or so of the, uh, the launch, but a little bit shorter to drive and be able to kind of hang out and be closer without feeling like we've gone so far in case they do scrub the launch. So that's kind of our plan at the moment. So figured just put a little more charge in the car. We were down to about 35% in this distance. And uh, that's enough to certainly get us there and drive around. It was going to leave us in the Vero Beach area, somewhere by the beach, with about 18%, which would have been fine. But I didn't want to find us having to uh, head out and look for a supercharger that was close by, um, assuming that the launch did go up or didn't go up, and we have to wait a long time to, to get charged just to be able to head on our way again. So we'll, uh, we'll use that uh, to our advantage um, so we can drive around just a little bit more. So we'll just stop here for maybe 10 minutes or so and get a little bit of charge and be able to do that. So it's interesting when you start thinking about charging and how that works, the fact that you're picking a destination off somewhere, um, we just picked a destination somewhere near Vero Beach and it came up with how much charge we should put on in plantation. And then we, uh, we were gonna be able to make it all the way there with about 18%. But then we started thinking about the driving around time and the fact that we have to leave and start heading back home and gonna have to charge again. So we figured let's charge now uh, a little bit since we have a little extra time and we'll pick it up again along the way. So kind of interesting. And this is the same charger we were at uh, last week when we were, uh, when we were up here. Um, just worked out on the way that this worked out okay as far as uh, timing goes. So that's, that's how we'll do this. And uh, we'll go from here. It's with these uh, Tesla superchargers and the fact that they're numbered and you should, uh, the two that are together are the ones you want to stay away from so that way you can get a faster charge. But the charging at this one makes no sense because the one on the end there is 1A. This is 2A. That's 3A. And then around my car here, um, I was just noticing this. There's 4A right there. That's the one I'm charging at. But then this is 1B and 2B and 3B and 4B. How do these connect to each other? I'm, I'm assuming they could, but it's kind of a weird thing. How do you decide which ones, uh, which ones are connected to each other so you can get the maximum charge? I don't know. Kind of strange. I haven't seen that configuration. I didn't really notice the numbering on it until just now. Actually, we decided to stop in a place that's called Hutchinson Island, which is about 60 or 70 miles from the Space Coast, so it seemed like a good place to watch a launch.
It looks like it's happening, though, of course, it's, you know, we're having a little streaming issue here, but it looks like it's actually happening. We're about two minutes away. And uh, we found a place in Fort Pierce that seems like it's nice. So this should be good. I'll uh, probably step out just to see it act the launch actually happen. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, man. Thumbs up. We found the right place. Let's see how this looks. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Spot and dog. America has launched. One alpha. And so rises Copy. a new one era alpha. of American space flight. Stage one and with the nominal. ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power time to nominal. And as you can see on the map, there's a cloud cover somewhere between us and the Cape. So we found this spot that was here in, uh, I believe we're at Hutchinson Island. And um, it looked like a good spot because you get a great view. That would be the Cape that direction. And it uh, seemed like it'd be a great view of the, uh, of the launch. And we sat here and we saw that it went up and never saw anything. You see that gray cloud cover there? <laughs> that's our that's our nemesis right there. So even though we were probably in a good spot because we're less than 70 miles away from the launch site, um, we didn't see anything. We looked, we watched, we studied the clouds, and nothing. And it's kind of a shame. We to see at least something, but we saw nothing. So um, kind of an interesting way to spend the day then. But at least we got out of the house. We did something fun. We stopped along the way. We we're having a nice conversation along the way. So it's not all bad. It's just too bad we didn't get to see anything with the, uh, with the cloud cover such as it is. Um, that's too bad. There's some other people here in the parking lot uh, near us that did the same thing. They were like looking around going, where, where is it? But that's the way it works sometimes. It's unfortunate, but we had a nice trip. And well, <laughs> that is life, I guess. I guess we'll head home now. <laughs> Put in the GPS, the route home, and it actually picked two charging stations for me. One was much further south, which would leave me with a very low amount of energy, and then the same one I went to earlier, so it turns out I had to go back to the same one as I was heading home. It wasn't the greatest experience, you know, we'd, uh, we got up there, it was great getting up there, and it was fine. We did the two stops for charging, and um, it turns out that based on where we ended up, to get home, the most likely place to stop again for a charge was the same charging station, that we stopped at on the way up. Uh, it just worked out that way. Um, we could have gone further and gotten to like 10% on the battery and used that as the next charging stop, but we decided to go ahead and just, you know, cut the difference and come here to the, the same charging stop, which is fine, but it's weird that we wound up at the same place again. So this is three charging stops today, and I gotta admit that I'm a little annoyed about that. It just feels like it was a lot. Um, it just, I don't know, after the bust of not seeing the launch and whatever, it just felt kind of funny um, the way it worked out. but. That's life, I guess. You know, that's the way things work out sometimes. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it works. There was one other quirky thing that happened while we were um, out there. I was, I had set up a, my um, GoPro on top of the car, had mounted it on the car, and was just, we were sitting still, and I uh, just had it up there, and I was, I was shooting some video, and never got to see anything with it, but turns out some, a big gust of wind came, and for some reason, it detached it. I had the suction cup for the uh, dash cam on it, and for some reason, it detached, and it actually blew off, and. <laughs> Uh, the video is kind of funny, actually, is it falling falling to the ground? But it was like, what what just happened there? That was weird. Um, so there you go. And then uh, the other thing was, uh, I just noticed uh, as I was sitting here charging, the car next to me was um, a Tesla, but he uh, he's trailing something, and he was trying to figure out how to pull his car in and get charged. It's kind of interesting to see him kind of doing that. So uh, I hadn't thought of that before. Anyway, there you go. That's uh, that's what's happening so far. And as we headed home, we were on our last leg of our journey, and uh, I saw something I'd never seen before. It was 54 motorcycles 
entering the highway all at the same time. Now I've seen a group of motorcycles before and surely I've seen them on other roads before, but just entering the interstate, it was just unusual to see that many motorcycles coming on the road. And it was just like one after another after another. And they kind of made their way to the center lane and everyone moved over. It was kind of an unusual set of circumstances. Everyone slowed down, gave them room, moved over and let them just come on the interstate. Uh, just something I'd never seen before. And I thought it was kind of interesting. And one last little thing. People have said that the Crew Dragon space capsule looks like the ghosts from the Pac-Man game, and well, I have to agree with them. I think it does. <laughs>